there's um, things to be done, but uh, there's obvious reasons for you know having the the drawings and the importance of having drawings because uh, you know we hope that uh, these guys with the Sheridan Technologies can take this and then go out and, and be able to make more and uh, be able to reproduce it and without good drawings, without accurate drawings, that wouldn't be possible. Um, as far as meeting notes, um, sometimes it seemed like you do it for nothing, but if you use meeting notes, you know, correctly, you can, it really holds accountability and, and kind of makes your progress happens. Um, luckily, we had a, a great leader to kind of keep things going, make sure progress was happening, but it's important to kind of note down how things flowed and, and that the way that things happened. Um, this is just uh, some of the meeting notes. We, the basic outline is just, you know, we didn't we didn't bother much with uh, messing around. You know, it was what assignments have we finished? What assignments do we still need to do? What are the new assignments for this week um, that we need to finish by next week? Uh, a lot of times, you know, those those assignments uh, would get. You know, we'd forget them or stuff, things like that. But there was a lot of times, honestly, that we did really good at, at, at uh, taking our assignments and, and doing well. Um, <laughs> uh, the things that I learned, you know, honestly, it, it, as you can see, and with all projects that you probably see, things come down to the end. And everybody's rushing in these senior projects, and, and there's so much at the end that you just have to really get done and work through. Well, I, I honestly really think that one of a couple of things that I, that I learned throughout the semester. One is the importance of communication, and uh, I I think I learned this lesson, but I don't think that we did poorly at it. I think it was one thing that we did really well, uh, with communicating, uh, talking to each other, and and things that we obviously could learn how to do better and. and to improve at and to be able to say, you know, change this as we're going along and, and I did this and I changed this and, you know, and, and kind of work with each other that way. But that's the way projects go is I've, you know, had a little time working, you know, it always seems to end up that right at the end you're rushed and that's the way it goes and it's, you know, important to uh, be able to finish things strong, which is the second thing that I'd like to talk about that I learned, which is working as a team. Um, we had a great team. That's a really important thing to have. If you look, and you've seen you know, most of them, but we had a balanced team, and it was important for us to be able to finish this project. I mean, Derek was a great leader that took us through and made sure that everything was happening and on time, and he was really good at communicating with others. Brian, I mean, these guys don't do themselves justice, but Brian was an awesome machinist. Every time he brings stuff back, I was impressed. It was always on time. Everything. Karsten said he didn't really feel like he knew anything about welding, but you guys need to look at the welds that he did, because they're awesome. I mean, I'm not a welder, but he's a really good welder. Uh, Nick took care of things and did things, and he was saying, you know, he didn't really know anything about machining, but that was one great thing about Nick and Eric and all the guys helping each other. You know, we didn't all, we stand up here and say this is what I was in charge of, but we didn't just do those things. It was you know, a, a joint effort, and we all helped each other get things done. Um, honestly, you'll see, too, that Justin, it, it, he's great at drawings, and he would help me every time I seemed to mess something up on the model, he was there to fix it. So um, it's good to have a good team. It's good for teamwork. Uh, we can, it, it sounds, I'm sure you, it feels like sometimes you sit here and listen to these projects, and it's so stressful at the end of the semester, you get up here, and it sounds like, well, it was a mess, it was a disaster. We had all this procrastination, everything, but that's how it is. But it's getting through it and getting it done. And honestly, we had our last test not, you know, a couple weeks ago, and we still had a couple things, small things to change. And here we are with, you know, a finished product that I think, and I hope they'll be happy with and satisfied with that they'll be able to take. And, and, and I honestly think we did a really good job. So I don't, I hope we don't sell ourselves short that, uh, we did a good job, I really feel, and I think that was the biggest lesson I learned was the importance of working together to uh, finish a product, and, and I feel that we did that well. Um, Justin's up next. All right, so like Chad was saying, I was in uh, together, Chad and I kind of took care of the, the drawings, and I did the outline as far as what this, this presentation is, and bringing that all together, making sure we 
had something to say when we got up here in front of you guys today. Um, the drawings were definitely uh, a chore. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. There's a lot of different changes that we made that we were uh, needing to change drawings, change little parts, update dimensions, and things like that. And, and yeah, like everyone has said, there, towards the end of the semester, it seemed like everything just kind of snowballed into itself, and there was a lot to do. And, a lot of long nights in the computer lab, updating drawings and stuff like that. Um, but I think it was good to just, uh, take care of the presentation and everything here. As far as lessons learned, uh, like this guy here, maybe on the phone after it happened. No. Uh, <laughs> we did communicate quite well, I thought, within our group. Um, uh, but the biggest lesson that I think that I learned was just organization. Uh, I'm pretty big on organization like myself and making sure things are like done the way that I think they should go and, and making sure that things are in place and wanting to keep things in order. And I think the lesson that I learned most on this, on this project was that I should have uh, kind of asserted more of myself into that to kind of keep our project more organized than it was, kind of like everyone, a few have already alluded to as far as, you know, something has changed we decided we need to make a change, then carrying the change throughout the whole system and not and doing it right then and not waiting until the very end like we did with a lot of things in the semester. But um, it was a good experience, definitely. I learned a lot. I don't know too much about like the machining and welding like uh, uh, like a few of the other guys do, but I was able to help a little bit with the machining and some of the different things and learn some of the different uh, practices and, and just kind of tips uh, and watching everyone else and the, the things that they did. Uh, it was good to learn that and see how that's done so that I you know in the future. I think that helped me by seeing that it helped me in my in future design work that I may do to know that you know things have to be made this way or it's, it's easier to do it this way when you're actually making it. So. If I design it that way to begin with, it's going to cut down on a lot of uh, headache and, and screaming and yelling, even though there was none of that that happened with us. Um, so as far as some of our testing goes, we're going to get into a, a few of the things uh, that changed throughout the semester. After we got everything designed and, and had our first prototype, we went and tested it and uh, had a few problems. Obviously, it wasn't perfect right to begin with. Um, not tracking straight as we drew, uh, as we were just driving, it kind of tended to veer off to one side or the other. So we uh, needed to come up with a solution for that. Um, when it was going underneath the racks in the warehouse that we had it in, it would it would get caught up on some of the different uprights on the rack. So our profile is a little bit too high in certain places. Some of the uh, times the guides that we had on the sides were hitting in the things that we should have, that they needed to be uh, clearing. Um, and then just a few other little things, our side sweeps were uh, not touching the ground as much as we'd like them to, but, uh, and then our traction was a, a kind of an issue at the beginning. We thought that uh, that might have to do with the weight, but it ended up that the weight was actually right on as it needed to be. Um, but uh, how everyone else kind of Everyone else is going to kind of kind of get up right now and, and talk about some of the changes that we made to first fix some of these problems and then just some of the changes that we needed to do uh, just as the project evolved. So, all right, this is our drop down caster setup. Uh, this is actually the old one. This is our first design, and this is what we came up with at the end. Uh, our first problem that we were worried about is height because. Uh, as you can see, our, our pins, uh, so we were able to step on the cable, came out quite a way, so that means the pin guide set up pretty high, so it was at, at the limit or maybe a little above, so we wanted to try to eliminate that. And we also thought that it, the cable wasn't out far enough to really get your foot on, and it might uh, catch up on the, the, handle, uh, the handle mount. So we decided to get rid of that and actually use brake levers. It, it made it much more easy to release those pins and drop it down and it saved us on the height for the pin guides. Uh, and pretty much that was the biggest change. And the thing was that the handle, or the levers, were only for seven-eighths handle. 
and we were currently using a one inch, so we actually had to go down to a seven eighths uh, bar. So that was the biggest deal in that. And also, uh, when we first had it, there was a lot of play in the pins, so it felt really sloppy when you're moving it around. So our, our, our solution for that is we actually put stops, uh, so it, it stopped it, the pins from moving forward or backward. This would actually hit on the, the plate that went across, and this would actually hit on the kick plate where you, where you step on. So it just locked it in place, and you wouldn't have that play back or forth. So it actually turned out really well, and it, it works really well. And the, there's actually the finished part that we had, had done. So, frame it better. Uh, one of the importances that we were confronted with the main frame is that we had a lot of stuff compacted in there. We had the drive assembly, which consisted of the motor, the axle, and the tires. And we also had the radio equipment, the receiver, and the batteries. Uh, when we first designed it, we had the initial idea of doing two battery boxes so that we could run the series in parallel and increase the life of the battery. Um, but that kind of posed a problem because the batteries that we chose to do that with um, ended up actually being larger. And so we ended up switching that to do just a single tray style battery box. Um, this one, once again, was made of aluminum and so that's a challenge for those as well. So we went to a bigger box that house not only the battery, but also the radio equipment as well. Um, the issue that we had with this is that it was still too high. It didn't meet our height requirements. And it was actually too low to the ground. And we were worried about uneven floors, more debris actually stopping the gopher keeping it from going forward. So what we did ultimately is we made a more narrow battery box. And we ended up switching batteries to a smaller, lower profile battery. And buying multiple of those batteries and then putting them in series. And we'll get to more of that explanation of the batteries later. Um, this new style, we're able to make it more compact. The batteries were small. And it also allowed us to have, because it was narrower, be able to distribute the weight of the batteries and also the radio equipment so that we could shift the weight more towards the tires, which actually helped, or helped with the tracking uh, straight up the gopher. So that was my point for us. So, so it's, it seems like such a simple thing, but it proved out one of the one, one of the most important factors of just trying to get it to track, stay, track straight and to keep everything compact and clean. And definitely an interesting project. So. so the guides were also something we changed. Um, that's the old one, the new one. The new one's a lot more simple. Uh, the old one, we had the idea of it was totally encased aluminum um, angle, I guess you'd call it, with the guide actually attached to it. Made it extremely rigid. Uh, we thought that was good at first. We found out later it wasn't. It actually it, it didn't allow any plate to actually kind of move the gopher around. Uh, so we came up with a lot simpler, cheaper idea. Uh, that's a lot more inexpensive, where we just have the single uh, the single guide. We have a few examples up here with just the mounting piece attached to it. And it actually proved to be a pretty good, uh, simple way to put it on. It also made it a little bit looser so you could slide those in and out. With, with this current, with this old one, we were having a hard time sliding in and out because it was so rigid. Everything would have had to be just spot on to, to make those slides. So that, that kind of loosened it up a little bit. There's the actual finished guy. Uh, some of the other things in the very beginning, we were just looking at basic radio controls. We didn't even know if it was going to work, so we didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. Uh, so we were just kind of looking at the basics. And this was just a few things we pulled off that would have worked together. But from talking with um, Sherry and, and we came up with a better solution. And that was actually an industrial, it's a, a crane remote. But it serves the same purpose. Uh, but it looks a lot nicer, a little bit more industrial. It is smaller, fits your hand nice. And a nice uh, 
some of the options it has is it, it does have four buttons and it does have multiple leads coming out of the receiver. So those buttons could be used for such things as a horn or lights or anything else you could add to it. So it allows for uh, add-ons. Uh, Karsten kind of hit on this. We originally had a bigger battery. It was a 36 amp hour battery. It was heavy, it was pretty expensive. And we were only planning on using one in a light version. It was set off to one side, which was causing a lot of our, a lot of the problems of the gopher veering off to one side because we had all that weight on one corner. Uh, had the idea to go with five smaller batteries. They are a 12 amp, 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery. When we series those all together, we get the same amount out of them. And uh, it solved a lot of weight distribution problems. As you can, once you go look at it, you can see we just uh, daisy chain those together and you end up with the same amp hour. So I'll turn the time over to The, uh, the strip rut or the side sweeps, they didn't change very much. Uh, the main things that changed on them were these UHMW caps. Uh, we uh, made like a cap on the end, so when it came across the guide posts, it wouldn't be rubbing on the raw material. It'd have something to slide on. Um, and then the holes were, were off a little bit, had to adjust them according to the hinge. And there's the final picture of it. Um, now, if I go back. One thing about the, the side sweeps, um, we ordered the strip brush holders, and I, I did some research and found them on Granger. And so I got one inch from there, or we didn't order it from there, that's where we got our dimensions from. We ordered all our parts from the master car, we got a one inch strip brush holder from there. And it ended up they measured from different points. Um, so that was one of the challenges we, we were faced with was ordering stuff from different websites. We need to make sure that they were the right ones. Um, now these are the side sweeps. These are adjustable with the, the frame. Um, as you slide the guides in and out, the kind of hard to see, but there's a brush right here. Um, and it'll adjust as far as it, it'll go out. This was the original holder we had on it. Uh, but for ease of manufacturing, that was a pretty hard piece to make to hold that strip brush holder. So we ended up just doing two L brackets and welding them on there. And that actually worked out really well. Um, one of the things we had to add, though, was a, uh, like a stopper. So it had some force pushing down and up. So it wouldn't just be pushing up. And there's, oh, there's actually a better picture of the side sides All right, just real quick on this list of uh, everywhere that we we went to get different parts, our, our different vendors, um, and then as far as our cost estimate goes, our last semester we we came up with cost estimate and we thought that might be off just a little bit. And after getting all the parts, knowing exactly what we would buy for this part. Um, we've got a total difference, we have a, a savings from what we estimated last semester to what we estimate now this semester of $400, four, approximately $400. So we were able to cut down on what we were estimating the cost there uh, as far as buy parts and then our manufacturing total of the parts that we would have to make as well. Uh, and then just some of our different vendors, uh, a lot of the stuff came from the MasterCard and uh, online metals as far as the materials. Go, and then some just other uh, single items came from uh, some of these other ones. So, and then all of our hardware from Bolton Nut Supply Company. So.